Hey guys, welcome back for another Full Joy Mom video. I am super excited to be back at making videos. Um, if you are watching these real time, I took two weeks off to finish up the school year and then throw a fifth birthday party for my daughter Fiona and I'm back. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you about two and three year olds today in this video and like how do we accomplish being moms that have joy with two and three year olds. So stay tuned for this video. You're watching. You're watching. Well, if you are new here, my name is Dawn Marie and I am the super happy, blessed, full joy mom of Jackson, Fiona, Eliza, and Charlotte. They are six, just turned five, three, and two. And the girls, like I've had a three and a two year old and then a three and a two year old and then a four and a three and a two year old in the house. Like I've just had so many twos and three year olds um, over the last few years. And you know, it's funny because you hear these two opposing arguments, right? It's like the way that seems right to a man, the way of the world is to be like, oh, it's terrible twos. Having a two year old is terrible. And, and then maybe they're not so hard on you while you walk around with your toddler. Uh, maybe they don't say anything about the two year old, but they're like, oh, you think this is bad. Just you wait until they're teenagers, right? So we get all that stuff. And then we flip sides and we go the whole way to the other extreme where um, a lot of Christians have said, no, it's not terrible twos. I'm just gonna confess the opposite. It's terrific twos. And what I personally would just like to say that why are we focusing so much on those two-year-olds? Like how about those three-year-olds? I don't know if it's just me or what, but to be honest, I find it way more challenging to deal with a three-year-old than a two-year-old. Like whoever made up terrible twos just hadn't had a three-year-old yet, in my own opinion. And I also don't, in my own opinion, understand why as Christians, we tend to just like swing so far away to the opposite side of the spectrum. Like instead of just being like, I see you, you're doing things the way that the world talks about doing things. Ah, we don't do it like that because we're Christians. We do it like Jesus tells us to do it and just like move along. We, we have to have this opposing argument that is just as extreme as the other side. So here's what I'd like to say. If you are a mom who loves your kids, but you don't love every moment, like that's okay, that's great. I think if we try to have this terrific twos in mind, all we're gonna do is set ourselves up for failure. Honestly, like every moment of life is not enjoyable. That's why the book of James exists. That's why we talk in Colossians about trials again. You know, the whole Bible is full of count it all joy when you consider various trials. Uh, not every moment is gonna be fun with your two or your three-year-old. So I have some lists of things that describe twos and three-year-olds. I have some, some helpful thoughts that I think to help me to find the joy in this moment. So let's dive into all of that. I love the verse that says that a way a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Like our thoughts can control our feelings and our emotions and what we see around us. And so while I'm not off thinking terrible twos, I'm also not honestly thinking terrific twos. I tried it out for a little bit and all it did was honestly set me up for failure because anytime I was inside of a moment that wasn't terrific, I was like, what? No, I confess this is gonna be terrific. No, no, I'm just gonna enjoy this moment and or this moment needs to be enjoyable. You know, a lot of times counting it all joy and having the joy of the Lord be your strength means that you choose to experience God's joy, which is separate from your circumstances. I love the verse, I think it's in Isaiah, that says that the Lord will harden you to difficulties. Like sometimes there are hard things we go through in life and God wants to make us harder than those hard things. He wants to harden us. We can be harder than the hard thing in our life. Like 
we can walk through that trial and like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can come out not even smelling like smoke. So I take that verse and I apply it to all the poopy diaper situations of having twos and three-year-olds. You know, they're not terrible. They really aren't. Uh, some characteristic things I've found of two-year-olds is that they're just incredibly curious. At two, their brains are growing so much that it's not like they're deliberately setting out to ruin your house, marker your walls, trash the carpet, yank things out of the refrigerator, stand on the counters to get into the stuff that they're not supposed to have. They're just so curious. Like when you find them playing in the toilet, they weren't maliciously thinking through how this was gonna, you know, ruin your afternoon by spilling toilet water all over the house. They were just thinking, my brain is starving for growth and learning opportunities and this water in this toilet bowl looks really fun for me to play with. So I made that adjustment in my thinking that they were just super curious and very hungry to learn and to grow and their brains were growing so fast and that really, really helped me to see the messes that they make and to be like, okay, you're, you're bored or you're not bored, but your brain is growing faster than your little arms and legs and body can keep up with. And so you are just in a constant pursuit. Like your child doesn't have ADD. They don't have any learning issues if they are not sitting at an activity for more than a few minutes. I can remember having those fear thoughts with my son Jackson and being so confused. Like he won't sit. He doesn't even hardly sit through a whole book. Like he does this project for five seconds. You know, you go on Pinterest and you're like, this idea looks like so much fun. And you spend all the work setting it up. And then your kid is in, into it for two seconds and they're, they're off to the next thing. Like we could blow through an entire list of Pinterest do it at home projects in two seconds. Um, so what is to say about a two year old that is so much fun is really like all those negatives can be a positive because they're just so curious about all of life. So as much playing outside, playing with um, anything really that's safe, all of life is a learning environment for them. And if they're not sitting still, that's okay. Their bodies are meant to just be go, 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 and learning new things about their surroundings. You know, if you get frustrated with your two-year-old because you're like, ah, I'm disciplining them, and they just go back and they do the same thing over and over and over again, something that I would say is, you know, their need for um, learning and their curiosity just has completely and totally overrided their awareness that they're gonna get a consequence again and again and again. So there's nothing wrong with your child. There's probably nothing wrong with your parenting techniques. There's nothing wrong with you as a mom. Your kid is just that curious that, yes, they just got whatever your consequence in your house was five seconds ago, but they're gonna go back to doing that again. So for me, if I really like run into a problem, sorry, my hair is driving me crazy. Anybody else have baby hairs that just like do what they want and then on a windy day, it doesn't help. Um, anyways, so, so something that's helped me is if there is a problem area where I find myself disciplining my child over and over again, rather than modifying my kid, I modify the problem. So I'll give you an example. I was having a, a child that learned how to open the gate at the bottom of the stairs. So they were escaping up to the second floor and I would discipline them and it wouldn't matter. They would do it over and over again. So finally I was like, yeah, I think we need to modify the gate, not the baby, the baby, right? Not the two year old. Um, so I got one of those locks that can loop around anything, right? It's like got, it's like the U, you know what I'm talking about. I put that around the gate as well. So we had to double lock the baby gate because the two and a half year old could get up the steps. And then now I wasn't, you know, giving them a consequence 5 million times and having to worry about that because I modified the problem instead of the child. So yes, we need to, to start to discipline our kids at two, absolutely. But the more that we can um, get rid of the, whatever the thing is in their environment that's causing the issues, the better the situations will be and the less uh, frustrated I think that you will be. And the reason you know that I did the two and the three-year-old video together is because maybe you have a three-year-old and they're doing some of the two-year-old stuff. Maybe you have a two-year-old and they're gonna do some of the three-year-old things I'm gonna talk about because every kid is different, right? There, no child fits inside of some perfect box or scale of this is what they should be doing, could be doing, whatever. All of our kids are different. So some of the amazing things that three-year-olds do is they can just come up with the coolest concepts ever. I mean, truly teaching 
your kids at three about God is amazing. They will come up with some of the most beautiful, insightful things. Like you as a mom will learn so much about Jesus when you teach it to your three-year-old. I'm telling you, it is so much fun. Three-year-olds say the coolest things. They have the coolest perspectives. They believe what you tell them. They're not like the adult that fights and fights whatever it is you have to say about the word of God. They just receive it like oh Jesus is my healer okay great I don't I don't have to put that into this box in my brain of all the sick people I can see in my life or how my body feels I'm just going to believe you so there are lots of things to enjoy about a three-year-old um, what I have found challenging with my three-year-olds is the fact that they sort of they, they have all those two-year-old things right they have they have all of the a lot of the two-year-old stuff still going on okay their brains are still growing, they're still super curious, but now they have started to become smart enough where they realize like, um, I can lie, but I don't necessarily have like the conscience that's telling me it's a lie. I mean, I do, but I'm three, you know, I have a three-year-old dose of it. Um, so I can like try and get away with stuff, I can be sneaky. And then my personal least favorite three-year-old situation to deal with is that they're just like totally unreasonable. I mean, it's as if all logic has just, it's left the building. You're like trying to be logical with them. You're trying to work with them and give them choices and not make their little three-year-old life difficult and they are irrational. Like it is so frustrating. Like, let me just tell you, every thought that comes into your mind about your kids um, isn't who you are. And it's not who, how you really truly feel as a mom. Sometimes because of the circumstances of, of having that two or three year old, our brains can get frustrated and they will spit things, you know, up into our subconscious or I'm sorry, into our conscious mind, you know, like maybe I'm going to spell it. I H E T this kid like, oh boy, that was a thought I had about Jackson when he was three. And uh, I felt so guilty about that. I mean, I just was like, I must be the worst mom on the whole planet. Like, how could I even have that thought enter my mind? This is my baby boy. Like, how? And it was just, there it was again, and there it was again. And I felt so guilty about that until I realized, like, wait a minute, this is a phase. Uh, my brain is telling me this because my kid is being unreasonable and crazy. And let's face it, if our toddlers were adults and they treated us that way, we wouldn't be around them, right? Like you would never let an adult treat you the way that your two and three year old treats you. And you know, we're all working to not allow the two or three year old to treat us that way, but they're growing. Yes, they're many little humans. And so the Bible says that as we receive those children, it's as if we're receiving Jesus. And so whatever we do to the least of these, we are doing to Jesus. And so we must walk in love. We must be gentle and kind and considerate and not be angry with them. But at the same time, there's gotta be this perspective that says like that two-year-old has the self-control of a two-year-old. Like that three-year-old has the self-control of a three-year-old. We are teaching them habits for life, right? Like we've all seen that adult and you kind of go, ooh, did you go to preschool and learn how to share? Like, I'm not so sure about that. Like, did your mommy teach you this principle because you are an adult and you haven't, you know, matured past preschool where we, take a turn and give it back, right? Um, so we are teaching them these these character qualities that we want them to have for life, but we have to know that, that it's in a three-year-old's body. So they are having self-control on the level of I'm three years old and they're gonna get better and better and better at it. And so you have to just, as the mom, hang in there. Don't grow weary in well-doing because in due season, you will reap a harvest. When your kids are little, it is seed sowing season. Now, something that I love to do is when I go out in public with my two and three year olds, I will pray over them, Lord, please help me to see the fruit of the seeds that I am sowing. And a lot of times I get to be in public and go, wow, maybe I am doing something right. Whoa, maybe my kid does know how to share. Oh man, look at that really awesome thing that they just did. And it so encourages my mommy heart. I mean, there's certainly plenty of tests and trials when you're out in public, stuff you gotta work through. Um, sometimes you go out and you go, oh yeah, so we don't even know how to sit still at a restaurant and eat because 
we're used to doing what we want at the house and so we've got to work through that and that you know was the reverse of what you want to see but now you know what you got to go back home and work on um, but so something to caution you when you're out and you're about do not compare another mom's highlight reel to your blooper reel you know I've talked about that with social media you can't look on social media and see um, the outsides of everyone else's life and compare them to your insides um, you also can't do that with you know you're on a play date and this one mom's kid had an amazing day and now you've applied it to that kid's entire life and now you're looking at your children through the lens of this kid's highlight reel who had a really amazing day in obedience and now you're feeling guilty about where your kids are at in life you can't compare them to other people's children so another thing that I like to remind myself is that I am a present mom and I am enjoying my kids. You know, there's so talk, so much talk about, don't let it pass you by too quickly. Oh, they grow up so fast that for me, it just sort of started to have the opposite effect where I was like, am I, am I paying enough attention? Am I enjoying this enough? Oh my goodness, I don't think I am. Like, no, I am. Like, I'm enjoying my life. I'm inside of every moment. Here I am, I'm present. I'm enjoying it like yes I make modifications to be more present you know if I if I get off track there but I am enjoying my life and I'm gonna be these kids moms for forever I mean it's gonna look different in every season of life but I stepped into the mom role and it's a forever role I will always be a mom to these children it will just look different and for me to box myself into thinking that like when they're little is the only time that I'm gonna enjoy being their mom is crazy and just setting myself up for failure in the future. So you are a present mom. You are enjoying your life with your kids. And if every moment isn't your favorite, that's okay. So some of the practical things I like to do to survive my two and three year olds are to first tell myself that this is just a season. It's okay that I'm not enjoying every moment of this season. I truly, like three-year-olds are brilliant and intelligent and amazing and insightful. I loved everyone else's three-year-olds when I got to work with them at church and babysit them. Um, they're not my favorite. <laughs> like when they're in my house and they're my kids, like three is not my favorite age. That's okay. If, if whatever your age is, that's not your favorite, that's okay. They'll progress to the next stage and you'll be back to having more moments where you just enjoy them naturally and you don't have to count it all joy, right? Um, and so for me, I've just noticed that like, yeah, three is not my favorite age, but that's all right because four and five and six and seven and one and two, those ages are all great. And, and maybe there will be another age when I get to my teenage years, but I'm not gonna worry about that. A confession that I have of mine is um, I like to constantly remind myself that I have the grace to embrace every season of life that I'm in. I can't look back and wish I was in the, the moments over here and I can't project into the future with worry. I can only be in this moment. Like God's grace is for this moment. And so I've found that as I meditate on that and think about that, it, it comes to the front of my mind when I'm in a, a hard moment and I want to not choose joy. I wanna choose frustration and irritation and I wanna choose I'm done and I quit. Um, instead, I go, no, I'm going to choose joy and I'm going to step into one of those grace bubbles I like to talk about because God has given me grace for this moment that I'm standing inside of. So another thing I like to do um, is take my own highlight reel from the day. Even actually bloopers are funny after the fact, so you take pictures. I take pictures and videos all day long and then at night when they're asleep and the house is quiet and I've wound down for five seconds, I look at them and their faces are so cute. Like they're just so cute. It's suddenly as if all of the yuck of the day has vanished and I just see this beautiful picture of my children and I fall in love with them all over again. So no matter what your opinion is on the twos and three year olds, hopefully you found some helpful tips you can try out, some good ways to think about being a mom of a two or a three year old in this video. And if you would like more encouragement in your mom life, I would just love for you to subscribe to the channel if you're new. We have videos coming out to you every week, practical tips and tips to grow your faith in your mom life. So I love you guys so much. I'll see you next time.